Well, good morning and welcome to Haven Green at Home, Sunday worship from Haven Green Baptist Church. I'm Dave Royster, the pastor, and it's a real pleasure to welcome you once again to, to our time of worship. This week uh, we've been away on holiday, Henry and I, and we've had a great week out on the Norfolk Broads, catching the sunshine out in the beautiful God's creation. And uh, I hope you've been able to, to celebrate as well and had an enjoyable week. I know there's been lots of news about COVID and uh, certainly we've enjoyed being away from uh, too much media and too much internet. Uh, it's really wonderful just to be away uh, enjoying uh, the wonder of God's creation and not being too caught up in, in, in all the worries that, uh, that there is uh, in, in the media. And I do hope that you found Malcolm's message of last week really helpful as he was helping us to, to overcome worry, knowing, knowing that God is with us and that God is for us. This, this is a week of celebration. Uh, 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 besides my holiday, um, we're, we're also uh, really looking forward to a London Baptist intern starting with us, a uh, guy called Femi, who's going to be uh, prayed for in our service at Haven Green uh, this morning. He, he moved over to Ealing yesterday. And uh, we look forward to getting to know him over the coming uh, weeks and months. He'll be spending a year, uh, academic year, with us. And uh, we look forward to all that God is going to be doing in him and through him. And I'm sure you'll have an opportunity to get to know him uh, over the coming uh, weeks and months. We're also excited uh, to celebrate the, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the finishing of our Building for Mission project. And a little bit later on in our service, we have a little, little short video that we can show you, the before and the after, and an opportunity uh, to pray together for God's blessing on that project. But now, as we come uh, this morning to, to consider our, our third um, uh, uh, service in the series, On Track, we're thinking about keeping hopeful and all these great things to celebrate, it's perhaps a bit easier today to keep, to keep hopeful as we think about God's faithfulness and God's goodness to us. Let's, uh, let's continue with a word of prayer before we come to worship the Lord with the song Amazing Love That Welcomes Me, that has that refrain, God, you are so good. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you this morning again for your faithfulness and your goodness to us. Lord, we're aware that, Lord, that there are concerns in the world. Lord, there is COVID-19, uh, Lord, that we can't get away from, that it's in the media all the time. But, Lord, we know there are other things as well. Uh, Lord, there are many uh, situations around the world, Lord, where there is warfare, there is famine, there is drought. Uh, Lord, all sorts of difficulties that people face in, 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 uh, in other nations, in other lands, and in our own land, Lord. Relationship difficulties... Uh, health difficulties, Lord, besides COVID. But we thank you, God, that you are a good and a faithful God to us, and we can come to you and we can pray to you, knowing, Lord, that you hear our prayers and, Lord, that you answer our prayers. And we come this morning, Lord, thank you, thankful that you are indeed a faithful God, that you are a loving God. As we look to the cross this morning, we thank you that it's an empty cross, that Jesus has died for us, but that Jesus has risen again and is at the right hand side of you, our Father, praying for us again this morning. But that we're not left alone, but the Holy Spirit is here with us. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you will help us in our worship today uh, to, to bring joy to the heart of God, we pray. And that, Holy Spirit, that you would bring the word of God to us uh, through our worship, through our times of prayer, and as Andy comes to, to speak to us later on too, we pray in Jesus' name.
sing that song, God, you're so good, it reminds us, doesn't it, of the Bible story that we were thinking about last week, if you were with us, about the baby Moses and his mum put him in that little basket and put him in the river to protect him and how he was found by Pharaoh's daughter and how uh, he was kept safe. This morning we're going to continue the story of Moses and think about the burning bush. The sun was burning hot. Moses' skin was burned dark brown and and suddenly he saw it. A bright red burning bush. Its branches crackled orange and red and Moses could not help but watch. For the bush did not burn up. Take off your shoes, came a voice from in the bush. This is a very special place. Who are you? asked Moses. And why are you talking to me? I'm just a poor shepherd. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. The God of Israel, the voice replied. And you are more than a shepherd. You are Moses, the man I've chosen to lead my people out of Egypt. I can't do that. Moses trembled. I left Egypt years ago, and I'm an old man now. You can do that. You must do it, God answered. For my people are slaves in Egypt and have prayed to be set free. I've heard their prayers, and you are the man I've chosen. But but what if I go and they don't believe you sent me? Moses asked. Take the walking stick that's in your hand, God said, and throw it on the ground. Moses did as God told him, and the stick turned into a wriggling snake. Now pick it up, God commanded. Moses wrapped a shaking hand around the snake's scaly middle, and it turned back into a snake. What a relief. Show them that, God laughed. Then they'll believe you. But I'm so shy, Moses continued. I'm no good at talking to people. Don't worry about that, God assured him. Your brother Aaron loves to talk. You can take him with you. Now go. My people need your help. So Moses went. He put on his shoes, he picked up his walking stick and he went. He went off to set God's people free. Isn't it good to know that God loves his people? He loves us all, that he hears our prayers and God answers our prayers and he picks on people like Moses to go and to set the people of Israel free. We're going to continue to worship God now and we're going to sing the song, Great Are You Lord, You Give Life.
let's allow the Holy Spirit just to continue to minister to us as we just take take a few moments just to be quiet and to allow allow him to speak to us. It may be the words of the songs that we've just been singing, other things, other thoughts that come uh, to our minds in these moments. Holy Spirit, would you come and would you continue to, to do that work of the Father in us? Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you know what it is that we need what it is we need to hear, what it is we need to feel, what it is we need to experience. Come more powerfully, Holy Spirit, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So we continue to pray now as Simon leads us in our intercessions. And then Shirley will come to bring the reading of the Bible. Let's pray. Let's still our minds and bow our heads. Loving Father in heaven, creator of this universe, we praise you and glorify your holy name. We thank you for your love and we praise you that nothing can separate us from your love through Christ Jesus. We thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the cross and for the blood of Jesus, and for the hope we have in you through him. We thank you for the week gone by, and thank you for your loving kindness and tender mercies each day over us. Lord, we lift up our world in the present situation. Have compassion on us, Lord, and heal the world. Where there is sickness, bring healing. Where there is strife, bring peace. Where there is lack, bring provision. And where there is confusion, bring clarity. We pray for our country, our leaders in government, the heads of departments and businesses and schools, for guidance and clarity, that they may handle their responsibilities and duties efficiently. Also remember our local community, Lord, that there may be growth, peace, and the longing to know you. We pray for our church, Lord. We thank you for your provision and guidance all these months. We thank you that you have opened new ways to reach people during this lockdown. We pray for Dave and all the elders for your divine protection, for guidance and direction as they lead our church. We also pray for the new members of the church staff, for your peace and ask you to direct their steps. Thank you for your children and young people and that they were able to start last week. We pray for the development that they will be able to know you and walk with you closely. We pray for our church building work, that it is completed on time and the building is in use fully for the glory of God. Lord, we lift up people who are sick amongst us. We claim the promise in the Bible that by your stripes we are healed and ask you, Jesus, that you heal us and strengthen us in our weaknesses through your spirit and restore complete health. We also ask you to remember everyone who is in any kind of need. You are the almighty God and we know that in you we have hope and I pray that you meet every need. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are interceding for us and we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Lord, help us to have faith that you are working all things for our good because you are a good God who loves us. 
And even as you're performing that good work in the background and working in the ways we cannot see, we will continue to trust you. We will continue to have faith in you because your ways are higher than our ways. Finally, Lord, we said if you ask anything in your name, you will do it. So we ask all these prayers in the precious and mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's reading is taken from Romans chapter 8, verses starting from 18. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be confirmed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one, Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. The theme of my message today is about hope. I'm thankful to Shirley for reading for us from uh, Romans chapter 8 uh, where Paul uh, talks about his hope in the letters of Romans. Uh, first, uh, to get you thinking, what is your hope? What does the word hope mean to you? What is it that you hope for? What is your hope based on? If you had to explain that to someone in, in 30 seconds, what would you say?
I think our hope is important because what we hope for, in a sense, defines what we do, defines who we are. Your hope is what you're looking towards. Your hope is what you're uh, working for. And the direction of your life is towards your hope. Uh, what we hope for uh, affects how we deal with the situation that we're in. So what does your hope say about you? We also read in the first letter of Peter, chapter 3, verse 15, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that you have. So let's think about hope today. This is the third and final sermon of a short series uh, called On Track, uh, which Pastor Dave has uh, set out. It goes with the church motto of uh, being on a journey, connecting with God for the journey of life. In the first one of these uh, talks, Dave was speaking about living in uncertain times. Last week, Malcolm was talking about uh, overcoming worry, and today the, the theme is keeping hopeful in hopelessness. Why are we talking about these things now? Well, uh, we live in uncertain and worrying times. Many people are concerned, for example, about coronavirus. Many people have been affected by it directly or indirectly. It's time to remind ourselves of some biblical truths and see our present situation in the light of that. If you have a Bible, uh, do keep it open at Romans 8 uh, from verse 18. It's actually such a meaty passage that I'm not going to try and cover every verse in detail and unpack it all, but it would be helpful to have it in front of you because I'm going to refer to it as we go along. What's the overall structure of what I'm going to say? First of all, uh, the, the subheading in the NIV is, is a good indicator of the passage. Uh, it says present suffering and future glory. So I'm going to talk about what Paul says about suffering and the hope that he looks for uh, in the future. Paul has a big hope. And I want to look at the reasons for being confident in that hope, which are based on the character of who God is, uh, what God has already done, and the way God loves us and is for us. Now, well, I thought I'd start with an illustration. I looked online for one and I, uh, I found a story about a, a school system uh, which had a programme to help children who were in hospital uh, to keep up with their schoolwork. Uh, and uh, one day a, a teacher was asked to pay a visit to a boy in a Burns unit in hospital. Uh, before she went, she asked the, the boy's classroom teacher uh, what she should cover uh, and the classroom teacher said well uh, we're talking about nouns and adverbs so if you can teach him about that that would help him not to fall too far behind while he's in hospital. So the hospital teacher uh, went to visit the boy but nobody had prepared her for how badly he'd been hurt. He was uh, in a lot of pain because of burns and uh, when she got there uh, she kind of at, at the sight of the boy she kind of stammered through saying that she'd come to teach him about nouns and adverbs uh, and she was a bit thrown and uh, when she left she felt she hadn't accomplished very much. The next day the nurse rang her and said what did you do to the boy? And, and she started to apologise, feeling she must have, uh, must have done it wrongly. And the nurse said, no, no, uh, you don't know what I mean. Uh, we've been worried about him, uh, but since yesterday, uh, his whole attitude has changed. He's fighting back, he's responding to treatment, it's as though he's decided to live. Uh, and afterwards the boy himself explained that he had completely given up hope until the teacher arrived. Uh, and everything changed when he came to a, a realisation, uh, as he put it, uh, they wouldn't send a teacher uh, to work on nouns and adverbs with a dying boy, would they? So his hope gave him a different perspective uh, and helped him to live in his situation. So, verse 18. I, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Now what were the present sufferings? Paul didn't have coronavirus. 
There is an outline later in the passage in verses 35 and 36. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine, or nakedness or danger or sword? As it's written, for your sake we face death all day long. We're considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Paul actually had experience of the things that he's writing about. Uh, there was persecution in his day from some of the Jews. Uh, there was harsh treatment from the Roman authorities. There were pagan worshippers who felt threatened by the new religion. All these things you can read about in the book of Acts. Uh, there was just simple hardship. It seems when this letter was written, uh, Paul had taken up a collection for uh, people who were suffering hardship, who were impoverished in Jerusalem, and he was going to Jerusalem to, to help them. And there were even factions and disagreements within the churches, people seeking to teach different things. So when Paul says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed, he's talking from a place where he knew what suffering was. Uh, and if you want to see it really set out, there's a passage in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 29. Uh, where he talks about how many times he's been shipwrecked, how many times he's been beaten or whipped by the Romans, how he's been uh, imprisoned. Uh, so, uh, but in all of that, Paul is not hopeless. Rather, he has a really big hope. Uh, and Paul, the hope that Paul had and speaks of in this passage is a big enough hope for us in our day. I feel a bit of a fraud talking about suffering because I have a much easier life than Paul did. Um, and there may be some of you who are much more troubled than I am. Nevertheless, this passage is for you. In fact, it's especially for you. Suffering is not a sign that God has given up on us. Uh, just as Jesus suffered and even died on the cross, and as Paul suffered, we as Christians are not exempt. God does provide for us. God does protect us, God does heal, uh, but we're not guaranteed an easy life. Uh, so it matters that the same hope that Paul looks forward to is for us, it's for you. We should all be encouraged with the same faith. Uh, and as we'll see, God is particularly at work in the difficult times and is particularly with us in difficult times. Just before I come to what hope means and what Paul's hope is, we should note that the passage also talks not just about our suffering, Paul's suffering, but it talks about all of creation. In other words, all of the world around us. In verse 19, creation is having to wait. In verse 20, creation was subject to frustration. In verse 21, creation is in bondage to decay. In verse 22, creation is groaning as if in the pains of childbirth. We might say uh, that the world around us is suffering from pollution, from species becoming extinct, from climate change, uh, and that's all true. Uh, but Paul is, is looking back to the idea right from the beginning of the Bible in Genesis uh, that creation suffers because of man's sin and disobedience. The land is cursed and produces thorns and thistles. Uh, that's there right at the beginning of the Bible. Uh, on the other hand, uh, what Paul is looking forward to is our redemption, and not just for us, but for all of creation, a new heavens and a new earth. Uh, that's the concept in these verses from 18 to 24. What does the word hope mean in English? It sometimes gets used very lightly in, in modern language. I hope the weather is nice. I hope there's something good on TV. I hope my team will win the football match. These things might make us feel better, uh, but it's not the concept of hope as in the Bible. Hope is not about wishful thinking. Paul doesn't even mean, I hope I don't get shipwrecked again. I hope I won't be imprisoned by the Romans again. I hope people will listen to my message and not oppose me. Maybe he did hope these things, but that's not the hope that he's talking about here. Hope is based on who God is. Hope is based on the promises God has made, which we can be sure of because God is faithful. Hope is based on what God has already done in raising Jesus from the dead. 
We sang about that earlier. Uh, 1 Peter 1 verse 3. Uh, in his great mercy, God has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that will never perish, spoil or fade. Or as, a, as a hymn puts it, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. So if we need a hope for our present day, for our present situation, we need that big hope. Paul is looking for the fulfilment of all that God has been doing. It's clear that this hope is something that we don't have yet, uh, but we have a taste of it now. Verses 24 and 25. But in this hope we were saved. The hope that is seen is no hope at all. For who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. So we're between the now and the not yet. We have a taste of it now, but the fulfilment, the real thing, the full reality is not yet. In verse 19, creation waits for the children of God to be revealed. Verse 21, creation will be liberated. Verse 23, we wait for the for our adoption to God's families and the redemption of our bodies. Now these are things we have in part, but the full reality uh, is not yet. We have the first fruits of the Spirit in verse 23. First fruits is an idea from the harvest. Uh, when you get the first of the fruits, that means the harvest is coming, uh, and you can, you can know the harvest is coming, but you don't have it all yet. Uh, and it's, that's the idea that uh, Paul is getting at here. We have some of uh, what is to come, um, but the full glory of, God, of what God will do is still to, to be fully realised. In verse 26, we see the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. It's not that we don't have suffering or weakness. It's not that everything will be easy or smooth. Neither does Paul say that suffering is just an illusion, as is taught in some Eastern religions. Paul himself suffered. Uh, Jesus suffered. Uh, we can't expect to be immune from it, but God is with us in our sufferings. If you hear anyone preaching that we won't suffer, uh, we just need to have faith, that's not the same faith as what Paul had, or the same experience of life. That really is wishful thinking. Verse 26 and verse 27 are saying, the Spirit intercedes for us. He teaches us to pray because he knows the mind of the Father. He knows our weaknesses and our needs. If we groan, as in verse 23, uh, and as creation groans in verse 22, the Spirit himself groans in verse 26. God is with us in these times. Come to verse 28, uh, God is working in all things, even in difficult times. Uh, verse 28 is a, is a good verse to memorise if you don't know it already. Uh, we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. So God is at work. God is working for good. God is working for good in all things. And God is working for the good of those who love him. That is for us. And it says also uh, God is working for the good of those who have been called. It talks about foreknown by God and predestined by God. Uh, that makes for the certainty of it. Uh, so good verse to remember. And then in the last section, verses 31 to 35, Paul is asking five questions. Uh, it's kind of rhetorical. In, in, in each case, the answer is no one or nothing. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing can prevent the big hope that we wait for. So verse 31. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? And the answer is no one. God is for us and that outweighs anything else. Verse 32. He who did not spare his own son, 
but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Nothing will stop him giving us uh, what he's promised. Uh, we have a confident hope uh, because God has already demonstrated that in giving his son. Verse 33. Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Again, no prosecution can succeed against us uh, in that final judgment because God is the judge and God is the one who justifies us. Verse 34. Who is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is interceding for us. So again, no one can condemn us, not our critics or our enemies, not even our own hearts, not even the forces of hell. Uh, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. And verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship, persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No one and nothing can separate us from the love of God. And then for final added emphasis, Paul finishes with a whole list. Verse 38. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's meant to be a pretty exhaustive list. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. And that is Paul's big hope. So to recap, uh, we looked at the first part of the passage where Paul talks about suffering and the glory that he looks forward to, which we have now partly, but fully in the future. It is now, but not yet. Uh, we see the big hope that Paul sets out, which he himself had, and which he encourages his readers to share, and which kept him going through difficult times. And then we looked at the reasons for being confident in that hope, which are based on the character of God, what God has already done, the way that God is with us, and the way that God loves us and is for us. So I hope everyone has got that, uh, and I hope that everyone can go on from here knowing that God loves us and God is for us, whatever our situation. But just to say, uh, if you've maybe not heard that or not fully understood that before, uh, maybe you've not responded to God's love for you in the past, we would love to talk to you about it more. Um, get in contact with us. Or maybe you're going through a particularly difficult situation at the moment and you'd like to talk to someone or pray with someone, uh, get in contact with someone from the church. We'd love to talk to you about it. Thank you. Well, thank you, Andy. I don't know about you, but it's, it's really encouraging, isn't it, to, to realise that, that when we suffer, that that's not a sign that, that, that God doesn't care. That when we, as Christians, we can look at the cross of Jesus and see see how Jesus suffered and see, of course, that how, how God loves Jesus and how Jesus in his dying on the cross, that's an act of love for us so that we can come into relationship with God through Jesus. So if you're suffering, if you're afraid of suffering from COVID-19 or anything else today, God still loves you. God loves you. God loves me. And as Andy was uh, sharing through Romans chapter 8 uh, that nothing, neither death nor life, angels nor demons, nothing in the present or the future can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. If you're a Christian today, I hope you can hold on to those, those words and have hope for the present and have hope for the future. Andy was saying that if you're not yet someone who, who is following Jesus, that now is a, is a great opportunity for you to be able to come into a relationship with him. And I'd like to lead you in a prayer to do that just, just now. Simply, all, all that prayer requires you to do is to confess your sins, the things that you've done wrong to God, acknowledging 
acknowledging that you haven't lived in the ways that he wants you to live, the ways that uh, he's made you to live, uh, and uh, just then choosing to live his ways and inviting him to come into your life, to live as your leader, as your guide in life. So let's do that now. Let's pray. So Lord, thank you, Lord, that we can indeed have hope, hope for today and hope for tomorrow. And thank you, uh, Lord, that when you made the world, that you, you made everything perfect. And the reason that things are not perfect today is not because of your doing, but because of our doing, because of my doing. And Lord, we want to acknowledge, Lord, that we don't live our lives and haven't lived our lives in the right way, that we do things that are wrong, that we have selfish attitudes and, uh, and make mistakes, Lord, and we are sorry for the things that we've done wrong. And we pray, God, that you would forgive us our sins because of Jesus' death on the cross, because he came to die in our place so that we could have forgiveness and that we could begin again, as it were, that we could live in a relationship with you, which was always as you intended life to be. So thank you, Jesus, for dying on that cross for me. And I ask you to come and to live in my life, to be my Lord, to be number one in my life, to, to guide me through my life. Thank you that I can live in relationship with you, Father God, because of what Jesus has done. And I choose to live now as your son, as your daughter. Thank you, God, for your love for me. Thank you that I can have a hope that is sure and certain from this time forward, even forevermore. Thank you, God, in Jesus' name. So if you've prayed that prayer, committing yourself to God, congratulations. just want you to know that, that these words that Andy has been preaching on that Shirley read earlier on today, that nothing, no height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That amazing love uh, that is, is uh, unbeatable. There is no love like it in all of creation. Put your hope in him. Wonderful. So praise God for his goodness and for his love. We're going to sing our finishing song for this morning. My hope is built on nothing less. Christ alone, cornerstone.
show you the the building for mission uh, project and uh, uh, Chris and Matthew have put together a short video with some uh, some videos and some still photography uh, to show you the the building before and afterwards and I'm sure that you're going to be impressed with what you see certainly the afterwards there uh, the the vision of, of building for mission was to open up our, our side uh, entrance and our office area so that all the people that come to use our buildings uh, which uh, over a year is many many hundreds of people come and use our buildings uh, they, they, they tend to just kind of stream through the side and uh, and go about their business and then leave by the side as well and there's, it's been very hard to be able to make contact with them and to reach out with them and we would just love to be able to uh, to befriend them and to share something of the love of God with them and to share what goes on in the building in terms of our Christian worship uh, and it'd be wonderful to be able to share the love of Jesus with them in practical ways and to, to share the gospel with them uh, and who knows maybe some would come to join the, the community of the church as well that'd be wonderful uh, and it's just been really really difficult to do that and so we wanted to be able to open up our buildings to give people a welcome and for us to be able to have a, a space where we could share with them. And as you see uh, the buildings as they are now, I'm, I'm sure you will see that that is now uh, so much more possible than it was uh, before. So uh, without further ado, here's the video. And when you've seen that, we're just going to, uh, to pray a prayer asking God to bless that building. <laughs>
So I'm sure that you're going to be uh, as, as thrilled with this building as, as I am, as you see just how, how light it is and how open that space is now. And you can just uh, imagine perhaps uh, all the people that are going to come through and the opportunities that we have uh, to meet with them. And uh, so let's, let's pray now and ask, ask for God uh, to, to bless uh, the, the, uh, the interactions and the encounters that we have with people as they come into the building. Let's pray. Lord, we want to thank you, uh, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for providing, uh, Lord, the, uh, the, the builders to, 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 uh, to, to produce this uh, new entrance area for us and new offices. Lord, we want to thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness and for the faithfulness of your people in providing the, uh, the, the finances, Lord, to, to meet the needs uh, for this. Thank you for the vision, Lord, that you gave to us to be able to open up this side area. And Lord, as you've done all of this, we want to pray, pray, Lord, that, uh, that Lord, that indeed this vision will be fulfilled. And, and Lord, that we will be able to make, uh, Lord, contacts with many, many people as they come into the building. Lord, that they will be struck, Lord, just at how beautiful this area is, uh, Lord, but also struck that they are entering into a church building. And Lord, that there will be opportunities for, for members of the church to, to come alongside people and to, uh, to befriend people and to share something of the programme of the church, something of the good news of Jesus Christ with people. Lord, we pray that you would fill that, that entrance area, Lord, with, with your Holy Spirit. And uh, Lord, that, that for those of us who are going to be sat out there or stood out there, Lord, that there will be an ease of conversation in, in making connections with people, uh, we pray. Lord, so would you, would you bless that area, uh, Lord? Would you bless the conversations, we pray, and pray, Lord, that we would see many people come to know the Lord Jesus, uh, Lord, because of this work, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, as we come to the end of our time together, just want to encourage you that as you do come back to Haven Green, uh, obviously you'll be able to go in and out of that side area um, uh, very, very shortly. And uh, I trust that you'll really enjoy that uh, very much uh, yourselves. Just one of the notices that I wanted to bring is that uh, next summer we are hoping to go to New Wine. Uh, we were unable to go this year for obvious reasons, but we're going to be going again uh, to United Week A. If you'd like to know more about that, please do get in touch uh, with me uh, or with one of the elders and we can tell you more details about that. But my thanks this morning to Andy and to Shirley and Simon in particular and to Matt for helping with the, with the video uh, and to our worship band, of course. If, you, if you're joining us for the first time and would like to know more about Haven Green, do take a look at our website, havengreen.org.uk. But let's now finish uh, with the words of the grace. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Have a wonderful week. God bless you and give you his hope.